Ah yes, Sochi, the undisputed worst track on the calendar. Just 7% of us F1 fans actually like this abomination, and the rest of us believe that it should be bulldozed and turned into a multi-story car park. Granted, there have been worse tracks over the history of F1, for instance Zelvig, but right now, Sochi is only rivaled by Catalonia and Yas Marina for the worst F1 track award. I mean sure, designing a racing circuit around an Olympic park is no small task, but then again, when you ask Home and Tilka to design the circuit, you might as well give up before you've even started. Getting Tilka to design a racing circuit is like asking Roman Grosjean to drive an F1 car. Just because it's his job, it doesn't mean he's any good at it. So with another painful Russian Grand Prix behind us, I wanted to look at why we hate Sochi. Like really, why do we hate the Sochi Autodrop? So it can't go without mentioning that this year's Russian Grand Prix was unusual in that it produced some good racing. For the first half a lap, even with the FIA's addition of the world's most dangerous exit road, the track struggled to produce any proper racing. Granted, we saw glimpses of excitement with Albon, Russell and Norris's battle for last place, but ultimately the track was still a bad circuit. So let's take a trip back in time, all the way back to 2011 when the likes of Norris and Stroll were barely even fetuses, Sebastian Vettel was still the most hated man in F1 history, and Lewis Hamilton was still driving for McLaren. In October of that year, the Russian government decided it was their time to host an F1 race, and therefore they set aside $195.4 million for the construction of their latest and greatest racing circuit, the Sochi Autodrome. Located immediately next to the Black Sea, the track was to be built around the complex which would be used for the 2014 Winter Olympics. As I've already mentioned, the designer of this circuit would be Herman Tilke. If you're not already familiar with this guy, let me give you the rundown of his involvement in F1 to date. Herman Tilke is widely regarded as one of the most disliked people in F1, not because of any controversial views he might have, but because of what he's done to the tracks that people so dearly loved. Other examples of Herman Tilke's handiwork include the Yas Marina circuit, Shanghai International circuit, and the circuit to Catalonia. Yeah, maybe this guy doesn't have such a great track record. But anyway, Tilke's past didn't fluster the Russians, and they hired him to build the circuit to end all circuits. Unfortunately, the so-called circuit to end all circuits was a complete and utter flop. The combination of high-speed corners and sharp 90-degree turns led to the circuit being about as good for racing as Alessio de Leda. Okay, fair enough, maybe the circuit doesn't have much to offer in the way of racing, but that's not the end of the world, is it? Huh? I mean, there are other things that can make or break a racetrack, right? The next thing to think about is the scenery. Despite what you may think, the backdrop plays a big part in making an F1 race the spectacle that it is for the fans. Suzuka is a prime example for this, with a huge theme park dominating the first sector. And yet again, Sochi has failed to deliver. The visuals of Sochi aren't bad, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's a beach just behind the start finish line and there's a freaking Olympic stadium on the inside of it. Somehow, the Sochi Autodrome has still managed to make the incredible architecture that is the Sochi Olympic Park look dull and grey. Perhaps it's to do with the fact that every corner is lined with advertising boards and crash barriers. That's not to complain about the crash barriers, however, as we saw in the F2 race that, without them, people would get seriously hurt. I just think that a circuit with such fantastic scenery could have done better to show it to us. Sochi's first race was in 2014, and it certainly set the tone for the rest of the season. Hamilton scored pole and converted it into a win, heading out a Mercedes 1-2. Mercedes have never finished lower than P1 at Sochi, a record which still stands after 2020's race. This is another reason as to why F1 fans hate Sochi, as nobody likes seeing a team dominate like this. Granted, Verstappen's P2 finish this year wasn't a result to complain about, but let's face it, Mercedes still finished 1-3. So that's all my main problems with the Sochi Autodrome out of the way, and so let's get on to another big and important question. Why is Sochi still on the F1 calendar? Well, to put it simply, money. It's no secret that F1 is an expensive sport, costing Liberty Media literally billions of dollars every single year just to put on a spectacle for the fans. And that money has to come from somewhere, right? And in this instance, the money comes from Sochi, or more specifically, Russia. You see, Sochi has the benefit of being government-backed, which means there's a sense of financial security with having Sochi on the calendar. Look, I know you're all angry and disappointed, I am too. But looking at it objectively, would you rather not be able to enjoy the sport you love at all, or have to put up with Sochi for one week every year? I know what I'd choose. But that's not all, of course. With Russia being as big a country as it is, it'd be wrong not to host an F1 race there, wouldn't it? But then again, there are so many tracks in Russia which are good enough to hold an F1 race. One of the tracks you mentioned a lot in the comments was the Moscow Raceway. It holds an FIA Grade 1 approval, meaning it's fit to host an F1 race. 
What with it being located in the capital of Russia, it would hold a more significant weight in the eyes of the Russian fans. And in my opinion, it looks like it'll deliver relatively good racing. Admittedly, there are definitely better tracks in the world, but I mean, hey, at least it's better than Sochi, right? So that's all I had to say about Sochi. It had the potential to be a great circuit to promote motor racing in Russia, but it just wasn't. So yeah, if you did enjoy the video, then like it and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.